Hi guys, welcome back to The Break Room. And now we have a special interview with Green Architecture Advocacy Philippines. So today with us is Chairman Architect Mike Guerrero. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you also for inviting me. So sir, could you give us a background? How did this advocacy begin? Yes. Well, Green Architecture Advocacy Philippines started in 2009. Yes. Prior to that, we were all a bunch of architects who were trying to do sustainability. But then we realized through the years that it's not only the concern of architects. It's the concern of everybody. So we decided to put up a NGO called Green Architecture Advocacy Philippines, which is open to everybody. So we, we are not only aligned with the architects, we're not only aligned with the engineers, but we're aligned to practically anybody who wants to learn about sustainability. In your perspective, sir, what is sustainability? Sustainability is actually preparing the future. It's actually saving our resources so that the future generation can still use resources. And I'd like to add something more. Green architecture specifically, I believe, is designing with nature. In other words, whenever you have a project, when you go to a site, you analyze what are the resources which I have available at my disposal. Where is the orientation? Where is the sun, etc.? What the materials are available? And you design according to it, including the climate. So that's what I believe green architecture is all about. On that note, sir, we know that this is a common effort now to create sustainable projects. But here in the Philippines, how imminent and important is it? Yes. In the Philippines, sustainability is, I would say, is of utmost importance. Why? Because we find the Philippines in an area of the world which actually gets hit by typhoon every year. Earthquakes. We have earthquakes. We have volcanic eruptions. So if you come to think about it, Surviving all of these things needs a concept of sustainability to sustain ourselves throughout all these disasters. And that's why it is very important. However, in the Philippines, there is one thing or attitude of the Filipinos which I think is very good but also bad at the same time for sustainability. Yes, sir. This is resilience. I'm sure you've seen that after big floods, media comes around, pictures people with water up to their neck. Yes. And they're smiling and waving. And yes. the foreign media cannot simply understand these people are in trouble, and yet they're, they're, they're happy. So that is a good and a bad point for the Philippines. And that's why sustainability, sometimes when you tell, tell them about, hey, we have to design better structures, better communities to be sustainable for disasters, they, they like it in the beginning, but when things not get, get normal again, they, don't, they forget about yeah. it. Okay. okay. Yes, exactly. So it's still a challenge for us to tell them, look, next year, their typhoons are coming again, and our, our buildings or our houses ready for that. So it's a challenge for us. That's why we decided to go into advocacy to share, share with people. Not that, look, let's see if we can do something about it. So sir, what does Green Architecture do in order to inform everybody about this? Well, Green Architecture Advocacy Philippines, we, what we do is organize monthly lectures. So we actually have a Facebook page with the same name, Green Architecture Advocacy Philippines. Every last Wednesday of the month, we have a lecture open to the public. And every year, we actually have a green forum, which is two full days, which we also invite people. Because, you know, since we only operate in Manila, uh, people in Manila can only benefit from that. That's why we put up a green forum so that even if you're not from the, the, the city, you can actually come into Manila for, for the green lecture. And it's just to share with you, because it's very, very related to what you're talking about, sustainability. Our theme, every year we have a theme. Yes. And our theme this year for our monthly lectures is climate change killing me softly. Why? Very witty, sir. Why? Because, you know, everything you do today, whether it's good or bad, the effects come maybe 100 years from now. That's true. There's no instant fix for climate change. It takes time. It takes time. And that's why what we've been doing before, maybe we are actually killing, killing ourselves softly. In other words, we have damaged something in the environment and maybe we're suffering from it right now. And then, in our Green Forum, incidentally, we're doing our 13th Green Forum already this year. 13th, all right. We've been doing it for many years. Our theme is climate change, I will survive. Now, what's the difference? So, in our monthly lecture, we, tell, we lay out the cards. These are the problems we're having. And in our Green Forum, we say, this is the possible solutions. So, that's, that's how we're going to work sir. out this year. Next year, we'll have a different theme, of course.